Okay, in this video, I'm going to walk you through variables and lists, and we'll look at some conditional statements here as well. So if you'll notice, I've got my quiz show app started where I've got the welcome label, where you'll put instructions, a button to get things started. On the game screen, I've got a label where the question will go, a place where the user will type their answer, and a submit button. I have a screen that will be, the user will be sent to if they answer a question correct and a screen they will be sent to if they answer a question incorrectly. Now, if you look in the blocks, for the sake of this one, I'm just going to send them back home again. So this is only when we've run out of questions will I send them to this wrong screen. But normally I would just send them back to the game screen again. I just wanted to show how this works. The correct screen, we'll wait one second and send them back to the game screen. And then on the home screen, I have a button that when they start, when they click the start button, it'll send them to the game screen to get things rolling. So let's start here. On the home screen, I want to set up a couple of variables to store all of my questions and my answers for this quiz. So to do that, I'm going to create a variable. And in Thunkable and in, in most programming languages, there are basically, I mean, there are more, but there are basically two types of variables that we'll be working with. The first one in Thunkable, they call it an app variable. <clears throat> Pardon me. The app variable is a variable that is lives only on the screen that we're on. So in other words, this variable cannot be used on any other screen. But since I'm creating questions and answers here, I want them to be able to be used on every screen. So I'm going to change these to a stored variable. These will be my questions. These will be my answers. And by making it a stored variable, these questions and answers will be available on any screen in my app. Okay, so when this page loads, so when this page opens, I'm going to set my questions and answers to be the questions and answers I'm going to ask the user and the answers that match them. So notice they both say stored variable questions, so I'll change one to answers. This is going to be a list of questions and a list of answers to go with it. So here in the list, I'm going to drag out a list. This is going to create a new list. But my questions aren't going to be the numbers one, two, and three, and nor will my answers. So I'm just going to delete all of these. If you click on the upper right corner, instead of inside of the, the number box, that is really helpful to delete those. And instead, my, my questions are going to be text. So here in this box here, and I'm going to grab a text block. And I want to duplicate that. So if I just click on it, Command C, then I can Command V, and I can paste a bunch of them. So I'm going to paste those in. Now having only three questions is not very interesting. I'm going to add a fourth question. To do that, I'm going to click on this little wheel, and I'm going to drag in my fourth question. Notice it created a new space, so that means I need a fourth answer as well. And I can just click the clog again, cog again, and I'll turn it off. So I'm going to add in my fourth question. Okay, the questions for that day is today. You can definitely change these up because that is, I can't type and speak at the same time. These are not very good questions for a quiz, so you definitely want to change these. What day is tomorrow? And what is the best day? Okay, and then I'm going to type my answers all in lowercase. So let's just say today's Thursday, yesterday was Wednesday, Friday, and the best day is Saturday. So with lists, the way these work is that each one of these questions is assigned a number. So in this list, this is item number one. What day is today is item number one. And in this list of answers, Thursday is item number one as well. So what day is today is an item one, and its answer is also item one. What day was yesterday is assigned to item two, and its answer is item two. That's three, three, four, and four. Good to know. Okay, when we go to the game screen then, let's choose one of those questions at random and put it in the question label. So when the game screen opens, we're going to just randomly choose one of those questions. So to do that, I'm going to choose a random number. 
that number I want to choose is going to be the same number for the question and the answer. So I need a new variable for that. I'm going to create a new variable. This one is only going to live on this page because it's just choosing on this game screen which question we're going to choose. So that's what I'll call it, which question. And it's going to be an app variable because it lives only on this page. And since this is a number that I'm going to be choosing, I'll just set this to zero to start. So now when the game screen opens, I'm going to set which question. Notice I have to click the drop down. I'm going to set which question to be a random number. So if I go here into math, I'm going to choose a random number from one to four. And I chose four because we have four questions and four answers. We'll come back to that in a minute, but for right now, we're going to stick with one to four. Okay, so I have chosen a random number. Now I want to go into my list of questions and go get that item. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to look for the one that says, I want to go get that item number. But notice here in this list, they're trying to ask you to create a brand new list, but we already have one. So I'm going to delete that list block. And in my question label, I want to set the text to be from our list. And our list was the list of questions. So in the list of questions, let's go get this item number, the first, second, third, or fourth, whichever was chosen. So let's go get whichever question was randomly chosen. Okay, let's go back to the home screen. Let's just test this to make sure it works. If I click, let's get started, random question. If I click, let's get started, different random question. Okay, so now let's go back to the game screen and when the user clicks the submit button, I will let you program the other part later. You'll need to check their answer. But what I wanna check right now is what happens when we run out of questions because every time I, I ask a question, I want to remove it from that list so it's not asked again. So to do that, when this button is clicked, let's remove this question from the list, the one that was originally chosen. So let's go into the lists we're looking for the block that says remove right here. So we're going to say in our list of questions, let's remove this randomly chosen question. So let's remove that randomly chosen question. Okay, let's run this and see what happens. If I click, let's get started. So what day is tomorrow? If I click it again, Oh, that's because we need to go back. Okay, let's, let's continue programming. There was more I wanted to do. So we removed the question from the, from the list. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, all right, when we run out of questions, let's stop asking. So I'm going to do an if statement. I'm going to grab a conditional, if, do, else. My conditional is going to say, if we run out of questions, let's just stop asking them and we'll be done. So I'm going to go check here in my list. Actually, I need an equal sign first because I want to check to see if our list is empty. So I've got an equal sign that I grabbed from logic. Now in list, I'm going to grab length of. Again, I don't want to create a list, so I'll delete that. And what I'm trying to find out is if my question list, if I measure how long it is, if I'm down to zero, that means I have asked all of the questions that are in my list. If I've asked all of the questions that are in my list, for this, I'm just going to end them at the lose screen or the wrong screen. You will do something different to make yours more interesting. But for what I've got right now, I'm going to send them to the wrong screen once we run out of questions. If we haven't run out of questions, then I'll send them to the correct screen. And what the correct screen will do is send them to the correct screen. It'll wait one second. We'll come back to the game screen where another random question will be chosen. So let's check this. Let's run it and see what happens. So I'm going to click this. There's my first question. What day is tomorrow? The user will type. You check their answer. They click submit. What day is the best day? Well, they'll type the answer. 
green screen. What day was yesterday? But now it says undefined. This should have been our fourth question, but we've got an error here. So let's go figure out why. The problem we have is that we're saying to pick a random number from one to four, but when we remove a question from the list, we no longer have four questions. So after the first question we, we remove, now we've only got three questions here. And then when we remove another, we only have two questions here. So trying to pick a random number from one to four means we're trying to pick a question that no longer exists. So what I'm gonna do is take a little piece of this code, I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that because I want to say, well, how long is the list now? How many questions do we have left? If we've only got three questions, then I only wanna pick a number from one to three. Now the next one is removed. Now the next time we come in, we've only got two questions. So I'll pick a number from one to two. So let's check this and see if it works. Okay, what day is tomorrow? That's our first question. There's our second question. There's our third question. There's the fourth question. So we should go to the lose screen now. There's the lose screen. Back to home. Home resets the list back to all four questions again. So we start all over. Excellent. Now it's time for you to check their answer to see if they got it right.